One thing that differentiates games nowadays from those of the past is that they're constantly being given new life through updates and balance changes. This allows games to stay fresh and exciting as the meta constantly shifts and new content gets continually introduced. I personally love this shift because it allows the games that I enjoy playing to stay relevant for longer periods of time while also allowing developers the opportunity to fix issues brought up by the player base. Of course, all things have their trade-offs and as much as I love updates and balance changes, they come with their own set of disadvantages. Sometimes metas that players really enjoy get thrown into chaos by a buff or new character being introduced. Sometimes it's a new map that players just don't enjoy playing. And sometimes agents that were once loved and considered strong end up getting power crept to the point where they pretty much become a joke in the community. This is Phoenix in a nutshell. When Valorant first launched, the agent pool was much smaller than it is today. We didn't have abilities like super sucks from across the map, knives that turn off other abilities, or laser beams. No, Valorant was a much simpler game back then where really the only utility included flashes, smokes, and the occasional shock dart. And way back in the day, one of the staples of the meta was Phoenix. He was an agent that you could just play and no one would really be upset when they saw him. His kit is very team oriented with the molly, his firewall, and flashes making him an agent to genuinely fear especially when he was hitting his shots. And this made him a very attractive pick for new players. On top of being a very attractive pick, he had it all. Good abilities, charisma, and most importantly, the duelist icon. But at some point between episode 1 and today, he's fallen off. And not just a little bit. I mean he's fallen off to the point that seeing someone lock him in feels like a throw. Of course, it's still not as bad as Yoru because no one's as bad as Yoru. Although Yoru is getting a rework soon, so maybe we won't be saying that for much longer. But Phoenix? I'm still waiting on some news for him because he's not in a great spot. And who could blame someone for feeling that way since he's basically just a sky but worse in every single way. Why would I pick Phoenix and throw my games by accidentally flashing my team that's right behind me when I can just play sky and do it from across the map? At this point I haven't seen a Phoenix in one of my games in about 2.5 months so I'm going to give you a quick refresher on his abilities. Phoenix's signature ability is Hot Hands binded to E by default. This is Phoenix's molly that also heals him. If your kink is self harm then Phoenix is not your guy. Phoenix's molly is made out of pure fire and he can just bathe in it for free HP. And it's not an insignificant amount either. He heals for 12.5 HP per second while he's sitting in it. Nothing about this really makes sense except for the fact that it's cool as shit. Who needs a pocket sage when you can just heal yourself? So if you lack the ability to find a significant other like me, Phoenix looks like a very enticing pick. It also recharges if you're able to get 2 kills after using it which sounds like a pipe dream now, but at one point that was a very real possibility. Phoenixes would chain multiple kills together in a round and be pretty much unkillable but nowadays he struggles to even get picked 2 games in a row. On top of the healing, it's again, a molly. Which means you can use it like any other molly to slow push, stall post plant, or just to clear a clear cubby where you think someone might be hiding. Of course, players in lower elos don't really use it for any of that and instead just stick to being their own pocket sage. Regardless, a molly you can run through is still a nice tool to have in your kit so for that it gets a thumbs up. Phoenix's next ability is Curveball which is his flash and is binded to Q by default. He throws it in a curve which allows him to use it around walls to blind enemies while also not blinding himself. He can also use it to flash behind him for extra style points. Overall, this is probably one of the worst flashes in the game because it's very predictable. I can't tell you how many times I flash someone only for them to start spraying and randomly kill me as I peek off it. There are much better flashes in the game at this point so this isn't really all that flashy of an ability anymore. Sky's flash does the same thing while also giving you info and it can be used at further ranges as well as to pop flash. You can do some cool stuff with it to get some unique flashes but you actually have to be good at the game to be able to do that. This is still one of Phoenix's defining abilities but it's a shame that it's just mediocre. Phoenix's final ability is his blaze which allows him to put up a firewall. The wall also damages enemies that touch it for 30 damage per second while also healing Phoenix. This is another very versatile ability that Phoenix has access to. It can provide cover in a pinch to allow Phoenix to make space on a push, grab the spike if it's stuck somewhere, or just to give something for Phoenix to flash through. The heal is also only half as effective as his molly at 6.25 HP per second, but it's still nice when you get low. The only problem is that the fact that it allows Phoenix to heal is kind of a crutch for new players. It disincentivizes creativity with the ability for new players because why would someone want to take a risk trying to make a cool play when they can instead just heal off that 14 fall damage they took from jumping off rafters before the round started. Although this isn't really an inherent problem with the ability itself and more with the players that use it. I will say though that I am a big fan of this ability's curves. 
Moving on, it's now time to talk about Phoenix's ultimate run it back. This ultimate effectively makes Phoenix a Phoenix. He gets to run out like the maniac he is for a short time, and if he dies or the time runs out, he returns back to his original location. This is by far the strongest part of his kit, and if you do play him for some reason, this is the thing in his kit you should be playing around. And at the cheap cheap cost of only 6 ultimate points, it's very easy to farm up ultimate orbs and have it up like 4 times a half. And for those rounds it's up, you can finally play like a duelist without being scared, while also baiting your team at the same time since it teleports you back to safety after the ultimate ends. This is one of the best ultimates for getting your team onto a site in the game, and definitely one of the better ones in the duelist slot. Also for some reason, Phoenixes seem to have a 50% aim buff while ulting because I swear I'll win my gunfights against him every single round I see him. And then the second his ultimate is up, he somehow had the time to download aim labs and get a full session in since the last time I fought him. This is still one of the scariest ultimates in the game and when you hear him start jokes overing, you better run for cover. Phoenix is a very solid agent. He comes with a very well rounded kit that has pretty much everything you could seemingly want. With flashes, a molly, and a powerful ultimate, he's the type of agent that could be useful in any team comp. However, unfortunately for him, he hasn't seen much competitive play in a while since there are so many other more powerful options fighting for his spot. But, although it seems like he's become a relic of the past, I wouldn't ever count him out. Because just like the Phoenix, whenever it looks like he's gone for good, he always finds a way to come back to life. Hey everyone, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. If you have any suggestions for agents you want to see me talk about in this series, please leave a comment letting me know. Don't forget that if you want to be a part of my climb, I'm going to be streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jittersvalve if you want to check me out. Also, follow me on Twitter if you'd like, I post on there pretty often. And if you want to join my Discord community, there will also be a link in the description for that as well. And finally, don't forget to subscribe for more Valorant related content.